<sighs> Sorry, that's the wrong part. So, oh, did you hear that? Luther sneezed. Oh, I have to change my battery because of course I do. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trisha if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. You're my people, you're my tribe. I appreciate you guys. I'm having so much fun with you. If you wanna be part of the tribe, we just started a Facebook group, and it's kind of great. Everybody's sharing projects, tips, support. I think it's been really great so far. It's growing. I actually thought maybe it would just be me and five other people, and here we are. We're like, getting I don't know closer to 200 members which is way more than five <laughs> can you tell I used to be in finance before like this was my job <laughs> did. a few weeks ago paradise fiber sent a package out that had some I believe it was mulberry silk and linen in it and I did a video where I spun it together I will actually link that video below and my my yarns turned out super cool there's a couple things about that spin. So I never told you guys, which I should have. I don't know why I didn't think about it. I guess because I wasn't, my, my mindset had gone a different way on purpose. I kept that linen dry because I wanted it to add texture to my yarn, but it's probably not gonna work once I wet it. And let me tell you why. You often spin linen wet, and part of the reason is because it'll soften up a little bit. When you're spinning it, it'll all smooth down. I didn't do it that way, but it's totally a viable, great and wonderful way. Because I knew that yarn wasn't gonna have any stretch, I decided that I was gonna weave with it. I don't know why no stretch equals weaving, but in my brain it does. I guess because woven cloth doesn't stretch as much as knitted or crocheted stuff. I don't really know why I think that way, but I do. And I had a set of dish towels. Is it behind me still? No, I moved it. I had a set of dish towels on my loom. You will see those in a finished project video very soon because they're done, but I need to hem them and wash them. Over, over the weekend, I finished up the dish towels and I wove some sort of like trying bags. I don't know how to explain this. I did weave some bag-like objects. They need to be finished is the reason why I'm saying they're trying bags they were very trying not gonna lie so i'm gonna take you through that process at the end i'm gonna show you what i ended up with i think that it is something you don't see on rigid heddle looms enough because it's such a cool option to have and I guess I'll talk to you about it in that. Okay, so some housekeeping stuff. If you're as excited as I am to do the sock extravaganza experiment, I will be putting out a short this week that'll tell you how I am gonna approach it and what the date of the first video will be. So kinda keep it in the back of your mind and if you're interested in that, make sure that you hit the little notification bell because then when the short comes up, it will let you know that it's there. And let me think, is there anything else I need to tell you guys? Oh, there is something else. Friday, I'm trying to figure out a setup where I can dye live in my kitchen. My problem right now is a TV because my TV that I use for a monitor when I'm live down here is actually on like a little a wheelie stand so I can move it around a lot, but it's heavy and I'd have to move it up an entire flight of stairs. I'm just trying to figure out how to do it. I really wanna do some live dyeing. And then let's talk, oh, what else? Oh, and then also we meet on Sunday still at two o'clock my time, which is Eastern Daylight Time, live with the Fiber Tribe, and we have a chat and it's awesome. And we have that Facebook group. So if you wanna come hang out on Sunday, it's two o'clock my time, Eastern Daylight Time, and then if I get the dying together on Friday, it'll be three o'clock on Friday, and gosh, I don't know. I guess I'll send out a reminder. What I usually do, just in case you're new, is put a reminder on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube when there's a live something coming up. It does seem like the reminders help. If they help you, let me know because that'll help me know if I should keep doing it. So Let's get on to the weaving. That was a lot of babbling. Sorry, let's get on to the weaving. I am getting ready to warp, double heddle warp this loom, but I am gonna start with just one, just the back one, and then I'll do the front one um, once it's all threaded up. 
and my warping bar is all set up up here this is the original model there has been a revision since that makes it a little easier and nicer but i never have an extra one to keep so i'm gonna go ahead and use my original current plan is to warp up 10 inches So I want this to be a pretty firm fabric. I'm gonna use a 10 dent heddle. That's gonna push these really close together, which is fine. I want it to be really firm. To start, because I'm using the two heddles, this is the one you can't really see well. Because I'm using the two, I need to pull two loops through each of these. One set of loops is going to be for the front heddle and one set of loops is gonna be for the back heddle. That's where I'm gonna start and then I actually have to turn this loom around because I have it the wrong way. <laughs> See, everybody does that but I didn't do it, I found it right now. And let's get it warped. All right, from the warping bar, to the back apron beam, this is 40, I want 40 inches. So I'm gonna move, scooch forward just a hair and then we'll be at 40 inches. I don't know how many that's gonna make. I've been thinking off and on that I should use a plain warp for this and I was like getting ready basically to warp this and I decided to go look and just see if I had something a little sturdier, plain black, that I could use for the warp. And so I went, if you guys, have, if you've been around for a while, you've seen my tub of odds and ends. So I went digging and I found this Plymouth Encore leftover from a sweater I knit my son when he was in like third grade. It's been there for 15 years. <laughs> it's time to use it. I'm gonna use this for warp and then all that other stuff for weft. I only warped six inches. I think this is gonna be fine. It's a little off center. That's not ideal, but it's not the end of the world. I mean, first part of the warp is done. All right, so this is a short warp. That's the back beam, or I'm sorry, that's the back apron rod. And it's going just up to the top of the mantle. So we're gonna unclamp it. I can just hold this this time. I've never been able to do it this way before. And just wind it on. What? Too easy. Okay, let me grab one more sheet of Mylar, even though I don't really need much. So easy this time, too easy. Makes me feel like I did something wrong. Okay, so we're done with that, that's it. That's crazy. I'm gonna pull this off the bar. This is not quite how I usually do it, but it worked fine.
uh, again, that seemed too easy. All we have to do now is slay the reeds. That's not as easy, but it's fine. We're gonna be good. Don't even worry. Okay, here we go. So yes, we're in my living room and it is basically empty because I just ordered a new rug and now we're waiting for it. Right here, you can see I was not lying about the Kromsky Minstrel still being in the box. And there is some washed wool underneath on the shelf. See this? <laughs> it's in almost every room of my house. I mentioned at the beginning, you do need two heddles to do what I'm about to do. And I have the double heddle block on my Ashford. I have this heddle in the back part of the block and then there is space for a second heddle in the front. I'm gonna link the video where I learned how to do this below. I mentioned when I started to warp that there are two loops through each uh, slot of this heddle. That means there are four strands because each loop you pull through is made up of two strands. I need to trim all the loops off and then I'm gonna pull one strand of the four going through each one of these slots. See, there's four strands. I will pull one through the hole to the right of the slot. I'm done, it only took a few minutes. So the next thing I need to do, and this is the part that I always for some reason have trouble wrapping my mind around, is and I'm gonna take the front heddle and drop it in, okay? Next, we're gonna take all the strands from the first slot and the first hole, so your original four strands, and we're gonna bring them through the heddle in the front through a slot, okay? And then, oh, did I get them all? No, I didn't, see? Let me get this last one. Then you want to take one of those threads, but you need to lift it and make sure it's not the one that you just ran through the hole in the back heddle. It needs to go through both slots, okay? And you're going to move that into the hole to the right of the slot you just pulled them through. What that means is through each heddle, oh, sorry, that was my vacuum. Each heddle, slot has three strands going through it and then one going through the hole next to it but it's not the same strand going through each hole it's a different strand of yarn so i'm going to just go across and do the whole thing it's actually fairly quick okay so we're all threaded up both of our heddles are completely threaded up now all I have to do is lash on. You guys know how I do that, but I will tie, um, I will tie bundles of probably only a half inch about a piece all the way across and then lash them to my front apron beam. I'll feel this and feel the bundles to feel if anything feels tighter or looser than the rest. And it's actually easier to tell back across the back. It does feel like... Um, this end is a little tighter. It's not uncommon to have the end be tighter than the beginning. So, okay, so that's good. And when I do have that where I feel like something's looser or tighter, you can just use the lash on cord and pull the slacks out until you feel like they're more even. Until And just take your time with that step. Be patient because it really is worth it to get your tension nice and even all the way across. I'm gonna start basically weaving a double thick fabric all together in one piece. So the first steps are just gonna be both heddles up, both heddles down, both heddles up, both heddles down, and then I'm gonna hem stitch also 
because I want that to be nice and tight along the bottom. So here we go. So this is what the bottom of the bag will look like. This is just one really thick piece of fabric and then it's gonna split apart here when I start changing the way that I weave and weave in a tube. But before I do, I wanna quickly take my tail. I left myself a really long tail. I am going to hem stitch across here because I wanna keep this really nice and tight. And you can see I did not use any waste yarn. I was pretty sure that this wasn't really gonna be spread out a lot because these are just packed in here so densely and it didn't. I mean, you can see once I hem st stitch this, you're not even gonna realize that I'm like, I'm so close to some of the knots. Look how close I am. So here we go. All right, so we're ready to start weaving in a tube. So the first thing I need to do is put both of the heddles in the down position and pick up one each of the threads that are on the top. So what I mean is when I say one each, one in each slot. There should be two up on the top and I just want one. I'm just gonna use a shuttle for this pickup stick. Um, I have some little shorties and they're actually just a lot easier to handle than those great big pickup sticks. Okay, and you can actually just like test it, looking at it, you can see when you're up close that I have one out of each. And I've actually put a piece of scotch tape on this shuttle and marked it A so that I can tell what shuttle, which pickup stick I'm dealing with. So to insert pickup stick B, which is another shuttle, it has a piece of scotch tape on it, marked B. I'm gonna lift, put both the heddles up Okay, so I have both my heddles up. I'm gonna move pickup stick A to the front and I should be able to see a little shed down here and you can see it, see that? What I wanna do is get pickup stick B in that little skinny shed. I'm gonna have to come around the back. Yep, okay, so pickup stick B is in. I had to get on the floor to do it, but we did it. Now we're all set up to weave a tube now. But when you wanna weave a tube, you need an odd number of warp threads. So what I'm gonna do is take one out and, and I'm gonna take out the, the thread that goes through the last hole in the front reed. So I'm just finding it back here and I'm gonna cut it. I'm following it back through the reed. Here we go. I'm gonna cut it back here because I wanna be able to weave it in. We used it to create the like double thick section in the bottom of this bag. So I don't want it to just get pulled out and I don't wanna lose it. So I'm gonna pull it out the front and I am gonna let it hang and I will take a needle and just weave it in at the when I finish up my project. It's only four positions, but they're kind of different from what we normally do.
So now I'm gonna be weaving a tube. Let me see if I can see the problem is you can't really tell it's a tube. I guess you can. See, I can. See, I've got my hand, my finger in between the two layers. So I'm just like weaving a flat tube. Okay, so I have, I got three of them woven. They each have a little bit different bottom, so I'm gonna see kind of like what works the best. And then I wove them different lengths. This one's long enough so I can line it and then fold it over. So I'm gonna cut these off. First, I'm gonna take out my pickup sticks. I was pretty close to the end. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna unroll these first and then I'll show you how one of them opens up. So it's one, two, three. Okay, so this one, I'm just gonna cut these. I'm just brave. What can I tell you? I'm just brave as heck. Had kind of a weird day. If I did this right, we can put our hands in it. Look, I did, I did it right, yeah. And then um, I'm gonna put my hand in. I come down to the bottom here and I can't go any further because that's just one thickness. So it's like a little bag. Isn't that the coolest thing? Okay, so let me show you the first one I did where I hem stitched the bottom. And if you're interested in watching how I finish these, I guess tell me in the comments because I'm not the best seamstress in the world. We've all talked about this before. My mom's taught me a lot of sewing, but I don't remember it all. <laughs> and I'm still not that great at it. So I always kind of bulk at doing anything with sewing. But if you're a weaver, almost inevitably, not inevitably, but almost, you end up needing to sew at least a little bit now and then. So I guess, let me know if you wanna see how I finish these. I'm gonna try some different stuff. That's why I wove three. Um, first, I'll just show you the the first one I did. I hem stitched this one on the bottom, and I have just trimmed it on the top for now because I don't know how I'm gonna finish each one. I think I, I'm getting an idea, but whatever. And um, I thought I'd also show you that I did get some floats. You can see some of the black floats. Uh, this happened to me the first time I wove double weave on my loom, and what I discovered this time is if I, it always happens, on the, I'm trying to think which one it is. It always happens on the third shed where you push the back pedal down. For me, not saying in the whole world. For me, that's when it always happens. I, I noticed these after the, I finished the first one. And so what I discovered is if I put my, sh my shuttle in and then kind of like tip it and thrum it all the way back, those, those threads will like pop apart and then I insert my shuttle, I don't get that anymore. You can see on the other ones, I did not get any floats. I honestly don't even know which one's the back because I didn't get any floats. Even cooler, so I did the, the weave, the double thickness at the bottom, and then I did a hem stitch, but this is the part that John was like, that's so cool, so check it out. You just weave it in a tube. I just, they're really actually turned out so pretty. I mean, ignore the fact that they're not lined yet, but didn't they turn out so pretty? And this is the last one I did. You can see, you just open up. So my thinking is, and why I wanted to like teach myself this skill is that if you were gonna make pillows, if you wanted to make hand woven pillows, wouldn't this be the way to go? Because you can close this on three sides because I did. It's closed, woven closed on three sides. You would literally only have to put in your pillow form and sew up one seam. To me, that seems like it makes a lot of sense, right? I hope you try it if you've got a loom because it is so cool. But I love doing this project and I hope somebody tries it because of this because it's really not that hard. So thanks for hanging out with me today. I appreciate you. I love you. Bye.